So in a recent episode of Under the Radar, uh, we had a lot of positive response to talking about math and how, how in some ways there's a certain amount of math that you need to know as, an, as a software developer, but it's probably less than you think. And I had a, just following on that at this week, um, I had a situation where I had to kind of use math in the way that often comes up for me, and I thought it would be interesting to just kind of walk it through while it's fresh. This is just kind of a quick overview, nothing particularly planned or prepared, but I thought it would be interesting. And so it's for a situation where I'm trying to make a, a title complication that is loosely based or an homage to this watch, which is the Abercrombie & Fitch um, Seafarer, which is a very old classic watch. And if you see over um, on the right side here, or the, sorry, the left side of the watch, there is what's there's sort of a, a complication that shows the tide, and it has um, blue and yellow circle or pie wedges that show the you know sort of the, the relative timing of high tide and low tide. And this dial you know rotates around um, every I think it's 23 hours or something, which you know it's so it's slightly off center so that the tides move every day. I wanted to make something similar to that, and uh, my end result my end result looks something like this. Um, so um, it's not quite the same, but it's a similar kind of concept. I have a an, a an orange wedge that represents the low tides, a blue wedge that represents the high tides. Um, and then I have, an, rather than having the d disc move, um, I have those aligned to the hours of the day so that midnight is always at the top, noon is always at the bottom, and you have a hand that moves around. Um, but for the purposes of this, there was an interesting problem that I had to solve with math that I thought would be kind of a good thing to walk through. So I'm going to start off by saying, so my goal and kind of what I end up with is I have, you know, I want to have a big circle that uh, I, sh I, I mark this on. And so I'm g based on the data that I get back from my API, I'm going to get a bunch of points. And so they'll be like, it, I'll have a high tide, and then I'll have a low tide, and then I'll have a high tide, and then I'll have a low tide. And typically you have um, four of these in a 24-hour period, roughly. I mean, there are some places in the world that are super weird, but um, that's most of what you want. And what I want to do is, so I'm trying to, whenever they're, is you know is a low tide is I'm trying to from the midpoint of there to the center of the circle out to the midpoint here I'm trying to shade this part in um, as orange which seems like it should be simple enough but it turned out at least for me it was a bit bit more complicated um, and that's because so I can relatively easily work out the angle for each of these points um, you know this is the circle is 360 degrees or what you actually end up needing to do for most of the time. Um, is use its two pi um, around, and so if you know I define this as my zero point at midnight, and then I just calculate the offset from that, you know, to work out what um, this this angle is here. Um, that was that was not too bad. But what was tricky though, um, and so let me just quickly undo a bunch of those strokes so I can show this to be cleaner. Is w working out what point this is here turned out to be actually really nuanced and annoying um, because averaging degrees or angles um, is really hard because they wrap around uh, zero. You know, so if you have a point here, if I'm going to do it in degrees because radians hurt my head, you know, so say you had a degree here that was 359 and one here that was one, you know, the average is zero, which is weird. Um, and I tried a lot of different ways to do that and I kept getting it wrong. And I don't know why I got it wrong. At some point I just moved on because I started feeling foolish and I don't like feeling foolish. So instead, I took a look at this, and I was trying to realize, is there another way that I can do, do this math? And um, it turns out there is. And so this is the thing that I wanted to kind of show here. So first, um, let me just clear up a little space. We're just going to focus in um, on this top part here where um, I'm, you know, this part that I'm trying to look at. So the first thing I did is I'm, I'm going to calculate this high and low point um, as x, w x and y coordinates. And um, to do that, you, the formula that I've now just like memorized is that you'll end up with you know, the x-coordinate of something there is going to be the center x, which is, you know, so if this is the center of the circle, you're going to have that. You're going to add to it the radius, and you're going to times it by the cosine of the angle. So in this case, you know, if this angle is theta in this case. Um, and for the y coordinate of this, it's all the same, but instead of doing the cosine at the end, you do the sine of the angle. So it's center x, center y plus um, the radius times the sine of the theta. And that'll give you the x and y coordinate um, of your point that I'm interested in here. So let me just clear that off. 
Um, so now I have this, this point, and I repeat the process again to have the, um, for the high, high tide. So now I have the x and y coordinates of this and this. And I know the radius, and I know the center. So now what I realized is, okay, so what I'm going to do now, and I'm sure this is, there's better ways to do this, but this is the way that made sense to me. Um, let me get back to the front layer of government. So what I'm going to do is I want to ultimately, what I need to know is what this angle is here and this angle is here. And I think they're the same. Um, it seems like they should be the same angle all the time, um, but I'm not totally sure on that because I don't understand trigonometry well enough. But uh, for the purposes of what I'm doing, all I really need to know um, is this angle because then I can subtract it from the angle that I do know and we'll be fine. Um, and so how do I do this? How do I know what the angle is from the midpoint of this to um, the, uh, in this case, the low tide point? Um, so what I realized is I know the x-coordinate of here, and I know the x-coordinate of here, and the y-coordinate of both. Um, so what I did is I realized I can make a line between these two, um, and I know the distance between this just from like Pythagorean theorem, or even more convenient, in UI kit, I just create a CG point with the high value and the low value, and I just ask for the distance between them. And then I take that and I divide it by two, and that should give me the point that's the midpoint between um, those two, um, the, the midpoint between those two. And I believe it should always intersect there at a right angle. Um, if I got that wrong, it's it, it ended up that the math works. So either it's a good assumption or it's an assumption that's close enough that it didn't matter. Um, but it's I'm pretty sure that should, that the angle that a radius always makes to a chord of a circle, I think is always a right angle. Who knows? If I'm wrong, it worked anyway, so I don't care. Um, and then, so now I have this nice little triangle here. And I'm trying to get the angle of this, and I know here, I know the um, the length of this segment here, the hypotenuse of this triangle. I know that this is just the radius. Um, I, so I, I got that. Um, I know that the length of this here is my distance divided by two. So if all this is my distance, this is uh, half the distance. And what I want to know is this angle here. And so this is sounds like, okay, I got a right triangle, I got some math things, what do I do? Uh, math is fun, <laughs> and I look at their, um, this, this diagram here, which I've, I've probably looked at this, this triangle a hundred times. You'd think I'd learn it, but it turns out I can't, um, it seems, and you work out, okay, so I have the hypotenuse, and I think I have an adjacent, and then I go and I work out, okay, so you know, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I come back here, um, I have, the looks like the high so if this is my angle so this is the opposite over um, the hypotenuse is what I have so if I have the opposite over the hypotenuse so that means that the sine of my angle makes the opposite so in this case the d over 2 divided by the radius um, which means that the a sine um, of d over 2 over r equals theta. Um, and so now I have this theta. I can subtract it from my low point, and I can repeat the process here from here if I want, and I think that seemed to work out. Um, and then I combine that all together, and I end up with um, the uh, sort of the, the angle I need, and then I can draw my circle. And that's what I did. Um, so I just thought that would might be an interesting kind of e example, a little bit messy, obviously, my handwriting's awful, but um, just kind of showing how you use, I end up using math um, to do this kind of thing. And, you know, then it's just a question of once I have this angle, and I have this angle, and this angle, you know, I go through and work, just draw the, um, draw the relevant arc, because, you know, I just use the C core graphics call that, you know, I, I move my UI Bezier path to the center, and then I add an arc from, you know, the start angle to the end angle, and then I close the path, and then I shade it all in. And there we're in business. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you thought it was interesting. Um, bye.